It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. From the CBS television news staff, Larry Lasseur and Don Hollenbeck. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Colonel Irene O. Galloway, director of the Women's Army Corps. This week we celebrate Armed Forces Day. Three times in the past 10 years, we've been forced to wonder whether our troops would be forced to fight on foreign soil. In fact, in the past 10 years, the threat of world war has never been remote. If such a disaster should occur, of course, women would be needed as much as men. And Colonel Galloway, you're the director of the Women's Army Corps. I ask for a start, just how many women are under your command now? Well, Larry, right now we have 8,500 women. However, you remember during World War II, we had about, oh, I would say approximately 100,000 women serving at one time, we had 150,000 women enlisted in the Corps during World War II. You see, so there are t just about 10,000, 12,000 now, you see? That's right. How many of those are overseas, Colonel? We have about 30% overseas serving in Okinawa, Japan, Germany, France, and Italy. Well, Colonel Galloway, before I ask uh, why women joined the Army, may I ask you why you joined up? Well, Larry, it was... Um, in June of 1942, I was coming from St. Patrick's Cathedral. A friend and I were discussing the article we had just read in the New York Times that morning of the possibility of women joining service. So the next Monday morning, we found ourselves down at Whitehall trying to enlist. Just like that. Did you, did you, you I suppose you had uh, possibly uh, relatives in the Army? I had a brother serving over the Pacific, and I felt I too should do something. Well, may I ask Colonel Galloway, do you find now that there are objections from parents about their girls going into the Army? Not too much. Uh, there always is, I would say, uh, some reluctance on the part of the parents to see a young daughter leave home, whether it's to go to college, into business, or into service. However, any girl under 21 years of age must get parental consent to come into the service. Well, at what age uh, do you accept people in the uh, Women's Army Corps? 18 to 35 years of age. However, we still have quite a few women in service from World War II. And we have one woman who's just recently had her 60th birth birthday. How's your rate of re-enlistment, Colonel? Quite high. And I was very pleased uh, finding that some of the women who felt that they perhaps would like to have a career in civilian life uh, have re now returned to the service after being in civilian life for two or three years. They find they have better opportunities, that is. They feel so. They mm. have uh, advantages of travel, education. In fact, I feel the opportunities for women in service are unlimited. It depends upon the in individual women. Uh, uh, Colonel, may I ask you this question? Uh, what uh, actually do you do in the Women's Army Corps now to make the career of uh, being a woman in the Army attractive to women? Do you... Uh, if I may say so, do something about their uh, uniforms, about their hats? Well, we don't feel we have to make the career attractive. Actually, if a woman is in service, I feel that she recognizes it is an attractive career. Yes, but, but the point is to get them to the to we that do point of getting over the hurdle and getting into the service. Isn't that the case? Well, uh, Larry, what we try to do is um, stress the opportunities of Furthering their ed education, the opportunity to travel. Not only that they, a woman can have a satisfying career, but in addition, she can contribute service to her country. You've smartened up that uniform I since World War II. Well, it seems yes, to me that have. it's a very attractive <laughs> uniform. Ha uh, has something has been done about that, and also the hat that you wore when you came in here. Well, uh, i tell you what we've done, Larry. We've uh, gotten rid of the ties, such as the one you're wearing right now. We feel that it's more comfortable with the small collar, not having the tie on the high shirt such as you wore. I see. We well, uh, learn by degrees, but I would say that 
what type of uniform was more comfortable. I think you re recall we started with the hobby hat. Yes, I remember that. And, uh, and that has been changed now? It's much softer, more feminine looking hat. And you have, uh, still have prominent designers doing these things? Hattie Carnegie's designed our present uniform, yes. Well, in other words, it is possible for a woman to be in service, to be military and ship shape, you may use an old expression, as well as feminine? Well, I think so. Couldn't uh, you what say are her so? Chances? I think you have. <laughs> <laughs> Prove that. What are, uh, what are a woman's chances for advancement and uh, a commission, say, as compared to a man's in the Army? Just as good or not so good or better? There again, it depends upon the individual. Mm -hmm. Any enlisted woman, if she qualifies, can become an officer or a college graduate, can apply for a reserve commission and concurrent call to active duty. What do you find women like to do best in the Army? Some prefer the medical field, x-ray work, laboratory work. Others prefer communication. Would it be in that order of those two what? the most popular? Yes, I was going to say, what do they do best? That's what they like best. What do they do best, though? Depends what do you feel they're best suited aptitude. for? aptitude. What do you think women are best suited for in the Army, though? Well, I wouldn't um, restrict that to the Army, Larry. It all depends upon the individual again. and. Uh, I think that uh, more and more we realize that uh, when we speak of man power, we do include woman power because there is a critical shortage. I see. In other and words, uh, life for women in the Army is no different from uh, the opportunities also that exist or the things they can do in civilian life. No, I would say not. And I think that uh, the past few years have shown that uh, women are becoming more and more prominent in government. Well, Colonel As Galloway, may I ask you this question, uh, speaking about women becoming prominent in government. Now, I don't want to make any comment about women in government, but does the Army actually change women, would you say? Do you think it hardens them? Does it make them more masculine? You're self-excused, of course. No, I would say that, uh, first of all, I would say that uh, a young woman character is developed before she enters the Army. Now, uh, I've... I've I mean, a young woman's character is already formed when she enters the service. Her character is developed. We encourage her to, her to develop and become self-reliant. And uh, we try all we <coughs> as much as possible by example and precept to make her an outstanding citizen, make her recognize her citizenship responsibilities, her responsibilities as an individual and as a woman. What does the uh, presence of women in the Army do to the masculine side of the Army? Any Yes, I'd any like effect? to ask you that. Does it have an effect on the morale of the men? Are women possibly troublemakers, or do they make the men feel as though they're in a more homelike atmosphere? Well, I, being a woman, I would say that we have a stabilizing influence. Stabilizing such as, uh, can you be more specific? Well, at the present time, I don't think that, uh, well, I would say men accept women in service. Uh, we aren't new. Ten or twelve years ago was a little different. But now they realize that uh, women do have a place in service, and we work side by side with the men. Pretty much as it would be Just in any other field. Just as it is in civilian life. Mm. Uh, Colonel Galloway, if I may bring up a rather uh, touchy subject in, in some quarters. I was in Korea last year when our army was in combat over there. And uh, I know you're a veteran of World War II. One of the things that uh, amazed me most was the new s sight of our army and the absence of segregation in it. In World War II, as you remember, the army was almost completely segregated up until the last battles, the Battles of the Bulge and the Ardennes. But in Korea now, the army is completely non-segregated. And I just wondered if your Women's Army Corps uh, follow the same pattern as our modern army now. Do you, is there segregation in the Women's Army Corps? When you speak of uh, uh, non-segregation in Korea, Larry, I hate to correct you, but I have to. There is no segregation in the army. Well, that's what exactly what I was referring to. There is that's none right. in, in the army. But what about the Women's Army Corps, though? There is no segregation. Actually, we don't even think of it anymore. Do you follow exactly the same patterns and uh, 
and you mix uh, colored wax with uh, white army troops in various military installations? Our, uh, all of our women live in the same billets, work side by side. And you, have you found this uh, to be a successful method? Very satisfactory, and we're proud of all of our women in service. Uh, Incidentally, I was in Korea, too, last year, and um, visit the Korean Army. We have a WAC con counterpart in the Korean Army. I see. And uh, the, you mean uh, American women in the Korean Army? No, the Korean Army has a WAC counterpart. Oh, from uh, things that they've picked up you. Well, may I ask you, though, finally, uh, Colonel Galloway, what would you say, I think all women are interested in careers, uh, what opportunities actually exist for women in the army. Uh, are they equal to those of men? Can they get married, would you say? They not only can, they do. <laughs> <laughs> but would you say that, there, that the opportunities to rise in the army are as good for women as they are for men? Every bit as good. Well, can With a every woman opportunity. We are in the same career field. Actually, uh, we, uh, the women in service serve in 19 of the 32 career fields. In case of uh, outright war, we would serve in 27 of the 32 career fields. We serve in um, any type of duty that is culturally acceptable to the American people. Of course, we do not serve in combat. Well, thank you very much, Colonel Galloway. <coughs> we salute you, John and I. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speaker. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lasseur and Don Hollenbeck. Our distinguished guest was Colonel Irene O. Galloway, director of the Women's Army Corps. When next you buy a watch, either for yourself or as an important gift, in all probability, your jeweler will show you models of almost every make of watch that you can name, at long jean prices and even higher. Now, what's your best buy in this situation? Let's try and find out. It's very significant that of all the watchmakers in the world, only long jean has won 10 World's Fair grand prizes and 28 gold medals. In a word, the highest honors for superiority of manufacture. Now, what about accuracy? In the Grand Championship Contest for Watchmakers, the Accuracy Trials at the National Observatories, Longines watches have established many records, won countless prizes and honors for exceptional accuracy. And what is the opinion of the scientists? In all fields of precise timing, sports, aviation, and science, Longines is everywhere the watch of first choice. Now these facts point to an inescapable conclusion. When next you buy a watch, either for yourself or as an important gift, if you pay $71.50 or more, you're paying the price of a long jean. And you should insist on getting a long jean. The world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift. Premier product of the long jean Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight reminding you that long jean and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. At Longines Whitnor Jewelers, see Atmos, the perpetual motion clock created by Le Coultre. Atmos runs without winding, without electricity, powered only by variations in the temperature of the atmosphere. Atmos, product of Le Coultre, division of Longines Whitnor.